The COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted the traditional supply chain for hospitals receiving PPE, prompting innovative strategies and non-traditional partnerships to ensure that hospitals and health systems are equipped with personal protective equipment to protect healthcare workers providing care for patients. Welcome to Advancing Health, a podcast from the American Hospital Association. I'm Tom Hederle, Senior Writer with AHA. In this podcast, Priya Bathesia, Vice President of Strategic Initiatives at AHA, moderates a discussion between Tom Nordwick, CEO of Uvalde Memorial Hospital, and Phil Sklar, co-founder and CEO of the National Bobblehead Hall of Fame and Museum, on continued PPE needs of hospitals and how non-traditional organizations have sought to help address those needs. Thank you, Tom. Through AHA's 100 Million Mass Challenge, the American Hospital Association, Microsoft, Kaiser Permanente, Kearney, UPS, and Merit Solutions launched a smart application called Health Equip, where hospitals in need of PPE are matched with individuals or organizations looking to donate medical grade PPE. One of these organizations, the National Bobblehead Hall of Fame and Museum, provided a generous donation of funds that brought medical grade PPE for hospitals such as Uvalde Memorial Hospital. Phil, you've been an amazing partner with AHA's 100 Million Mass Challenge and Protect the Heroes campaign. Can you tell us why your organization became involved with these efforts? Yeah, so in mid-March, uh, you know, when the pandemic was really um, you know, coming to full force in the United States and uh, we were learning about this in real time. Uh, the museum, we closed on March 14th to the public and, uh, you know, our world was sort of turned upside down. The bobbleheads that we were planning to release for Major League Baseball opening day, you know, in early April, were all in jeopardy and really the sports world was, you know, quickly shutting down. And so we thought, you know, a couple things, what can we do to help out during this time when, there's so many people in need and you know everything is changing and um, we sort of brainstormed some ideas you know we couldn't uh, convert to producing masks and ppe so we thought let's do something to raise funds for ppe doing what we do best which is creating bobbleheads um, and then you know secondly um, what kind of bobbleheads do people want and at that time um, you know we were looking and said hey, you know, people are asking for a Dr. Fauci bobblehead and um, we keep seeing him on the news on a, you know, every hour on every channel. Um, and he's become this voice of reason uh, for the pandemic. So let's honor him with the bobblehead. And um, at the same time, we had heard about the 100 million mask challenge and uh, did some research into that and thought that would be a perfect way to uh, really raise funds through the sale of the bobbleheads. And so on April 1st, we announced the Dr. Fauci bobblehead and announced that $5 from everyone sold would uh, be donated to the uh, American Hospital Association to protect the Heroes Fund uh, to support the 100 million mask challenge and to get PPE to uh, the places that need it. That's really awesome. And it's been exciting to see how that has all played out and how many bobbleheads you've been able to sell. Um, and I, I think a lot of that is the, um, like you said, the the wisdom of Dr. Fauci and his presence as we've taken on the pandemic, but also really the need of hospitals to um, have access to PPE. So Tom of Evaldi Memorial, how did this donation support your hospital? Well, uh, as we all know with the pandemic thus far, I mean, we, we you, you tend to see surges of or hot spots all over the country and one area will surge for a while, another area will surge. But when the pandemic first started coming about and uh, the need for uh, PPE increased uh, and that's personal protective equipment, when that, when that increased, the availability of it um, just was outstripping the demand. Um, you know, we would look um, th- 
through all of our vendors to see who had what gear available. And, you know, we put into place um, processes by which we we maximize the use of uh, PPE. Uh, but also you, you've got to provide your staff with equipment uh, so that they can protect themselves as well as the patients when they're giving treatment. And so having it is is so crucial. And, and there are times we just couldn't get it. We couldn't find it anywhere. And when we did find it, um, you know, it, it's crazy what's happened out there in the market. Uh, but this stuff, uh, you know, more than quadrupled in price. Um, in, in some areas, you'd see it probably listed at a tenfold above what you were purchasing it at before uh, the pandemic started. Um, but even then, if you were willing to pay for it, uh, uh, you know, people were ordering it. The shipments would get confiscated when they'd come in because a lot of times they were coming in from overseas um, and still being uh, dispersed to those hotspot areas. Um, and well, when, when our term came around uh, for a surge and our big surge was in July, um, uh, you know, we, we didn't have any isolation gowns uh, to speak of um, here in house, but we were very appreciative uh, to receive what we did. Um, and, uh, you know, I just say thanks to the uh, National Bobblehead uh, folks for, for doing that. It was a, a, a pretty neat thing to do, uh, and it certainly did help us to be able to provide that. Thanks, Tom. Well, Phil, we know it was really amazing how quickly um, the Dr. Fauci bobblehead sold out. So we really wanted to just provide you an opportunity to connect with one of the hospitals that actually received the PPE through your generous donation um, and really show, you know, how the sale of one bobblehead can can really make a difference. Um, what do you sort of have planned um, for the future of these bobbleheads as you move into the winter? Yeah, so no, we appreciate that opportunity to hear, you know, from one of the hospitals and we've heard from others who, you know, have expressed their gratitude and we've heard from customers who, you know, bought the bobblehead not just to have it, but also to contribute to a great cause. Um, and yeah, as you mentioned, the first bobblehead, you know, we had sold about 30,000 of them. So we decided to number them to 42,020 for the 2020, uh, you know, year and we were expecting sort of the pandemic to to die down, but unfortunately, it continued to you know flare up and move from you know all across the country in different spots, and we're still not in a, a good position as we hear you know on a daily basis. And so, yeah, the first version sold out, and we have done several other versions, which each each one uh, you know donating five dollars uh, to the Protect the Heroes Fund, and uh, we're approaching the $300,000 mark. And we've done 12 governors now, uh, Dr. Burks, five different Dr. Fauci bobbleheads, including a bobblehead ornament, which was suggested by uh, somebody there at AHA that uh, had a great idea and we put it into motion. And those are uh, just arriving now. So they'll be on people's trees. I think in all 50 states we've we looked at and people across actually the world, um, you know, getting Dr. Fauci bobbleheads and we also did a line of 35 different essential heroes and with $5 from everyone going to the Protect the Heroes Fund as well. Every uh, profession from, you know, truck drivers and uh, grocery store clerks to nurses and doctors. And uh, so, yeah, we're continuing to produce bobbleheads that we think, uh, you know, people will enjoy that gives, uh, gives them something to smile about, but also uh, raises money for a great cause. Yeah, well, well, Phil, we really appreciate it from the perspective of the AHA, and it really has been exciting and fascinating for us to watch um, how many individuals want to participate and help by purchasing these bobbleheads. And of course, they get a lovely bobblehead to look at, um, but I really do believe, you know, people are coming at it because part of this money is going to PPE. Um, Tom, you're also leading AHA's Small and Rural Council. Um, you've talked a little bit about the needs of your hospital, but what are you seeing as the needs of other rural hospitals when it comes to accessing and vetting PPE um, for their frontline workers? Well, you know, I think they're they're facing the same challenges that we did here in Uvalde, Texas, and just it's the supply and demand. And and when you're experiencing a surge in one area of the country, 
that's where the PPE tends to, to go. Um, a lot of our suppliers uh, kind of put you on a, a list, so to speak, and an allotment where you get uh, you know, so much of what you order a week or a month, and that's basically all you get. Um, I can tell you through some of the associations and whatnot, we, we do work together to try to coordinate um, the distribution of the scarce resources that we have. So if, if one hospital has a, a lot of X and their demand or, or their, their need for it because of uh, maybe, their, maybe they have current low volumes, uh, they'll share it with another hospital or share it with the association, which will distribute it to uh, another provider in need. So those are some of the things that we've done and uh, shared back and forth with uh, not just with PPE, but uh, all kinds of medical equipment. Um, here in Texas, we were fortunate to have a, uh, a uh, emergency um, council, I guess here, they call it STRAC. Um, and they've done just an awesome job in uh, helping to provide the logistics, the distribution of equipment and, and stuff uh, across our region here in Texas. And I know that's going on throughout the United States in different areas, just in different forms. And with all of that still happening, what do you see as some of the future challenges related to PPE or, you know, you mentioned other challenges related to resources um, during this pandemic? Well, you know, again, it's it's the availability um, and it's, um, you know, some of it, you know, I, I hate to say it's kind of like the public hoarding toilet paper. Um, you know, you get people that will stockpile that stuff for their next uh, surge, so to speak. And, uh, you know, if you have people that are gobbling up all those resources, then, then they're not available for others. And then the other thing that's happening in this, as I said before, is some price gouging. Um, now with your, with the normal vendors that we've dealt with through our, deal with through our purchasing groups, um, you know, uh, their pricing is still pretty good, but their availability of those supplies isn't sometimes as good. So then you have to go look to, to get um, supplies wherever you can. And sometimes that means paying more really than, than you should have to for uh, supplies. It's, it gets crazy. Yeah, it really has been challenging for our hospitals and especially our rural hospitals to gain access to the PPE that they need. Um, I'll just end with one last question, and, and this is for both of you, so maybe Phil can go first and then um, we'll follow up with Tom, but what can organizations and individuals do to continue to help hospitals with PPE challenges or other needs during the COVID-19 pandemic? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, it's the season of giving and I think, you know, as much as you can give and you're able to give, uh, I would definitely encourage people to go to protect the heroes and um, give either directly or and or through purchasing babbleheads, um, small businesses or businesses of any size, um, you know, could definitely look at a model similar to what we're doing where, you know, a portion of the sales go to a great organization like protect the heroes and um, you know, we're all in this together. Hopefully we, we'll get out of it stronger, but there's still a lot of work to be done. And, um, you know, let's join together with our friends, neighbors, family, and um, find a way to help these hospitals that are in so much need um, and get them the PPE they need so they can keep themselves safe and keep, you know, keep us safe. Yeah, that's great. Tom? You know, I when when we first uh, again got into this when we were in the height of our surge we had the public actually making masks for us so i mean our, our community was fantastic but if you look at what what can you individuals and organizations continue to do uh you know you know the hospital we we put into place different practices on visitation and whatnot um uh, and just being patient with us in that regards, we're, we're putting these things into place to protect the public, not to penalize somebody for being hospitalized. You know, when people come up to visit at the hospital, um, if they don't bring their own mask, then we need to provide one if they're going to get in to see their loved ones. So, you know, uh, helping us to preserve that PPE uh, as much as possible. Um, that's, from my perspective, that's, that's one thing they can do. And then just, you know, again, just being respectful of one another, keeping your social distancing, using those good, uh, 
hand washing techniques and, and being safe, uh, that's the best thing you can do because it'll keep you from getting sick and it'll keep uh, our, our staff from having to provide treatment and putting themselves and their families at risk. So just good common sense um, uh, in, in whatever ways from a monetary or donation standpoint that they can help with uh, uh, personal protective equipment or other equipment uh, that we need in, in treatment of COVID is greatly appreciated. Great, thanks Tom for sharing that. And we would again like to express our gratitude to Phil for your generation, generous donation um, to support our hospitals and health systems. Um, thank you Tom and Phil for being with us today. And now back to you, Tom. To learn more about the work being done to support hospitals in addressing their PPE needs, please visit 100millionmasks.org. For anyone who would like to donate, you can donate funds directly to hospitals at protecttheheroes.com or you can donate medical grade PPE at healthequip.com. Hospitals who would like to receive medical grade PPE can also register at healthequip.com.